New area of interest expected to become a cyclone in the Timor Sea. Update on this area of interest that's starting to get closer to the Australian coastline, currently passing the island of Yamdina in Indonesia. At 9.2 degrees south, 131.1 degrees east, it will pass to the north of the Tiwi Islands and into the Timor Sea. At 8 p.m. Australian Central Standard Time, April the 6th, uh, it had winds of 35 miles per hour, a pressure of 1,001 millibars, and moving southwest at 10 miles per hour or 16 kilometers per hour. A mere area of interest at the moment, it doesn't have a name, and it's designated by a JTWC Invest 98S. Here it is right now with no wind field obviously um, and its current position displayed on the map. Uh, well to the north of the Northern Territory at the moment and it's going to meander around this general area for a little bit over the next few days. It is currently 365 kilometers from Darwin, 640 from Dili in East Timor, 771 from Wyndham, 836 from Kupang and 1214 from Derby. The system is expected to move generally southwestwards over the open waters and could develop substantially later on when it enters the more open ocean region uh, off the coast of Western Australia. Flash flooding is the primary hazard for some coastal extremities of the Northern Territory and the Kimberley, which could receive high rain rates leading to flash flooding over the next five to seven days. Presently up to 300 millimeters of rain is possible in some of these areas, um, and the future of this cyclone remains uncertain, but models suggest that a very powerful storm cannot be ruled out next week. Well, here it is right now in its expected track and wind field over the next seven days, I think this is. So it meanders around at first over the Timor Sea, and then it really starts to develop into a tropical cyclone and gets much stronger when it enters the Indian Ocean proper. And look at the size of that wind field gets very large as it starts to approach the coast of Western Australia by next Wednesday there, its wind field still mostly at sea. Bureau of Meteorology haven't picked up on it properly yet, or at least haven't produced the forecast cone. Uh, AMSU going quite a bit lower at the moment at 25 miles per hour. Estimates vary around the 25 to 35 mark right now, um, and it will be, you know, toing and froing between those intensities before it gets itself more established. JTWC haven't produced um, a cone or anything like that yet either. They've still marked it as a low chance, which is curious. I think it ought to be quite a bit higher than that, at least 50 or 60% now for development. Uh, but JTWC keeping it low, along with another invest, for those who are curious, in the, in the Western Pacific, 90W, which could go on to affect the Philippines next week. Here's what the GFS has in store, so it's still at least a couple of days, two or three days before it starts to ramp up, and there it is, getting much stronger as it moves towards the west, and then really ballooning up in, in, in uh, size and intensity, and right at the end there, really getting quite intense. I must say that on this Zero Z GFS run, uh, beyond that seven day period there, uh, I think it's on day eight, it drops the storm to 898 millibars, which would be really substantial but it does turn westwards again and only affects Australia later on. This is a crude projection of what the radar might look like over the next seven day period. And you can see there, it's quite messy at first before it really starts to get in the zone there. Don't forget, really warm sea surface temperatures in that area as well. Uh, and then it really tightens up very quickly. Hard to see properly on this fairly low resolution, but you get the idea on what to expect and look along those coastal regions, a few areas there getting impacted with high rainfall amounts. And those are the areas that we're most concerned about for flash flooding.
Taking a look at the total precipitation then, just to give you some markers on where exactly we're expecting the worst rainfall at the moment. Uh, a few areas on the top end there, um, around Melville Island and uh, northeast and east of Darwin, and then a little area as well near Kalimburu, I think it is as well, uh, to the northeast of Wyndham and down further along the coast, north of Derby as well, uh, looking at high rainfall amounts, possibly getting up to and over 10 inches, 250 millimeters. Uh, but at the moment, we're forecasting that the very highest amounts of rain to remain well out at sea, as you can quite clearly see there, up to 35 inches on that forecast when the storm really intensifies at sea. And here's the sea surface temperatures. Look how warm they are, pushing close to 32 degrees Celsius over a wide area off the coast of Western Australia. So real cause for concern that this might be the one that really takes advantage of those sea surface temperatures late in this season. Uh, somewhat getting Orson vibes actually when you think of it there. That was an April storm and made landfall as a Category 5 in Western Australia. I don't think it's uh, anywhere near time to call for that just yet, but it certainly could intensify rapidly over those sea surface temperatures. You can check out the Force 13 website and its satellite pages. We're not looking at that just yet. This is Ram Slider and you can see the storm's progression there. Uh, but if you go onto the website, we do have many of our own image reviews of the storm on our floaters and you can take a look at that at any time. And here they are actually. This was the true color just before sunset and now into the nighttime hours, just passing the island of Yamdina there, moving probably south southwestwards for a bit and then turning more towards the west in the later hours there. A decent convection, uh, particularly on the western side, eastern side, a little bit bare, might be wind shear, I'm not sure, uh, but we're still getting decent uh, cloud tops in the minus 80 range, uh, which is obviously a good uh, sign for this system to get itself on track. But as we saw, uh, development of this potential cyclone could be a couple of days away yet.